Okay, so up here at about 5,200 feet elevation in a forest composed of pine, oak, juniper. Got some cypress uh, over by the creek over there. And the cypress, of course, looks a lot like this uh, this juniper in that it's got uh, scale-like blue foliage, uh, but it lacks that the lovely charismatic alligator-type bark. Uh, you also got some uh, platinus radii over there, that white, with that white uh, smooth bark over there. It's a species of sycamore, another riparian tree. Uh, and then, of course, surrounding... Uh, this verdant green valley with all the yuccas and the, the Muhlenbergia bunch grasses and what the shit. We have uh, that, that pink volcanic rock, that pink rhyolite, an extrusive igneous rock high in silica. You could see some more conifers up there. Now, the plant I'm about to show you, you could say it's probably one of the filthiest plants in North America. And hopefully some of you, you know, I know there's a couple stiffs watching every episode. Hopefully some of you don't get your panties in a bunch try and report me. But this is a plant called Clitoria Mariana. And it's actually a, a somewhat of a rare plant, even though it seems to be locally abundant in this uh, this little uh, patch right here. Uh, again, this is Clitoria mariana. You could see where the genus name got its name from, because I mean, it, you know, uh, <laughs> it you know, well, it looks you know what it looks like, I guess you know. And this was named in the late 1600s. This is not the this is not some modern sexy nuance. Someone tried to be a little shocking and get a little crafty. This was named uh, in the late 1600s, proving that even back then, people were perverts, which is fine as long as it's consensual. Just, you know, just, just make sure it's consensual, that's all. But regardless, very interesting flower morphology here, nonetheless, despite uh, the dirty name. So let's take a closer look at what's going on uh, with this, the flower of this uh, Clitoria. Okay, so anyway, looking at the flower a lot closer, uh, like I said, you could see why it got the genus name that it did. Apparently, it made a lot of people, men mostly, very nervous, probably offended their prurient interests. Maybe they weren't getting late enough. Uh, and I believe, you know, I think it was like early 1800s, late 1700s, uh, a bunch of guys tried to get the name changed, you know, which is funny. Just always trying to control shit that's got nothing to do with them. You know, I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess really they probably just weren't getting late or something. Maybe they need a hobby. Anyway, they weren't successful in getting the name changed, but uh, what you could see is going on with this flower is actually very interesting. Um, this is in the, the bean subfamily, the Faboidae, which uh, is the same subfamily as Lupinus, Lathyrus, Astragalus, and uh, any basically any of the, the flowers that don't look like Mimosa uh, subfamily flowers or Cesalpinia subfamily flowers. It is, they got a keel, two wings, and a banner. And the banner is right here. This is the, this is the, the banner petal right here. It's this big bastard, this big petal, uh, which is notable in Clitoria because in most other flowers in the pea subfamily, the Faboidae of the Fabaceae, the pea subfamily of the, the pea family, it's always subfamilies and families. But when you got 20,000 goddamn species, you can't just have one. You got to break it up a little bit more than just family. You know what I mean? Anyway, so the banner is is big as hell. And in most other flowers, the, 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 the pea subfamily, the Faboidae, the banner uh, is still posterior, but it's up, it's on the top. So basically, in other flowers of this subfamily, the flowers look like that, except the banner is nowhere near as big. So what Clitoria has done is basically flip their flowers, uh, at least the upright direction of their flowers over, completely inverting them, and then uh, make that banner large as hell. So that banner you can see is about five times as big as the, the wing petals, which are those two lateral ones, and then the keel... The keel petal, which is actually two fused petals, you can't tell, but it's two fused petals uh, right there. That center, pe that center petal is the keel petal. So you get the center petal, which is the keel, the wing petals on either side, and then the banner. And again, it's completely inverted and flipped up from how it is in uh, other members of this subfamily. Very interesting. Look at like a look at like a, be a bean flower if you got them, or a goddamn pea flower if you got it in your yard or some shit. If you grow in a veggie garden, it basically looks like this, but flipped upside down. And then the banner petal is nowhere near as big as this. So Clitoria made that banner petal big as hell. And then, of course, uh, put in, even put in a little nectar guide, you know, just in case the pollinators didn't, pollinators didn't know where to go. You know, help them get in there, help them get up in there uh, into that keel, which is where all the sexy parts are uh, contained and hidden. You know, the 10 stamens and the uh, unilocular ovary. Just basically uh, an ovary with uh, only one compartment. Two rows of seeds, two rows, two rows of seeds, but one compartment, you know. So, uh, 
I don't know, pretty interesting shit going on right there. Plus, it's got a hilarious name. I mean, I just have had, I've been able to say the word clitoria about five or six times there, and it's probably made quite a few of you uh, squirm in your seat or get uncomfortable a little bit, you know, which is, uh, which is funny. People, uh, I don't know why people uh, care about shit like that. Anyway, here's the leaves. You can see the new growth. It's that those uh, red pigments basically protecting the new growth from the uh, harsh ultraviolet sun until I get a chance to, quote, harden off. Uh, there's a flower that hasn't opened yet. And then, of course, uh, the fruit, when it matures, uh, is just a typical uh, pea pod looking thing, a legume. You know, and then here you go. There's, there's actually quite a few going off. Just beautiful. <laughs> beautiful clitoria. Doing very well. You know, and I can only surmise that the, what pollinates this is probably not too large uh, since, again, they do have to get, uh, they have to go in there and then up under and back into that uh, that keel, that keel pedal. So it's yeah, probably small flies and gnats and what the shit. I don't think there's wasps and bees going in there. Maybe, I don't know. Who knows? Some of the other species of Clitoria, some of the more tropical species, are probably pollinated by very large, uh, large, th you know, I, there's no way to talk about this goddamn plant without sounding obscene and dirty i'm sorry you know i just if i can is it my catholic upbringing or what fuck you know i'm at a loss here anyway it's a beautiful goddamn plant the pea plant family doesn't get enough respect for basie 20,000 species here's another marvel of it another wonderful genus 20,000 goddamn species and uh again uh, a, a rare plant but it's doing fine in this beautiful uh this beautiful uh conifer and oak woodland okay and then just to make it a uh, Next level obscene, to make sure that somebody reports this and tries to get me banned for uh, being too graphic, I've removed that uh, keel petal, and I'm showing you uh, what's going on uh, inside the flower. Again, you got 10 stamens there, which is an apomorphy for uh, for this family. I believe for the whole Fabaceae. It's not 100%. Again, you got 20,000 species in the goddamn family. Uh, not sure how many in the subfamily Fabordiae, but it's still a lot. So it's not 100%, but it's pretty solid. 10 stamens all fused together at the base. Sometimes you got an errant one that uh, is not fused. And then you got that uh, style, the female part, which is longer than those 10 stamens. Uh, and again, the, ten, the stamens have the anthers, which produce the pollen. But you can basically see uh, on, this, uh, on this flower, this is, this is the normal position for clitoria. And this is the normal position uh, upright uh, for other members of the subfamily. Is, see how that banner of, is normally up top. And when I hold it like that, you could see, oh, yeah, that does look like a bean. It does look like a bean or a pea flower. But again, in Clitoria, it's flipped over, it's inverted. And then, of course, the banner is just goddamn gigantic. And in there, you could see the keel petal, which, again, is just two fused petals uh, concealing the stamens and the style and the sexy parts and the ovary with the shit. And then, of course, I pulled back uh, part of the keel petal and a wing petal. So anyway, yeah, there's, there's Clitoria for you, and I'm sure the comment section will be a dumpster fire. I'm probably going to stay out of this one. Have fun amongst yourselves. All right, go fuck yourself. Have a nice evening.